Shot dead near Bankstown tonight, a daylight ambush, a gangster's brother targeted, two killers on the run, police fear recrimination. Under control, more COVID restrictions lifted, good news for Christmas parties and weddings. Opening up, the Premier's candid admissions about her week of controversy. Fistful of dollars, Donald Trump takes his campaign to church. Supporters turn out and line the streets. A good fit, an iconic Aussie company locally owned again, a mining billionaire buys back RM Williams. Termite season in Sydney, scientists reveal the list of suburbs worst hit. And live from Penrith, a grand final fever at the foot of the mountains ahead of the Dally M's. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. There are fears a gang war could now erupt across Sydney suburbs after two assassins gunned down the younger brother of notorious Brothers for Life gangster Bassam Hamzi. The daylight ambush of Majid Hamzi outside his Condell Park home has police warning of retribution. Murdered just metres from his young family, the slain body of Majid Hamzi lies outside a Condell Park home, shot several times by two men who knew who they were after. Bassam Hamzi's younger brother. Those two males have uh, been waiting uh, for the male to leave his house this morning, so certainly we would um, at this early stage say that there was a targeted shooting. The gunman managed to escape without being seen. Their suspected getaway car was later found burnt out at Yaguna. At this stage, we're still trying to determine if there are any links to the shooting. It's believed Majid Hamzi was walking from his home to his car when he was shot multiple times. He stumbled some 200 metres to a friend's house and it was there that he collapsed and suffered a cardiac arrest. Those who know him don't understand why he was a target. They say Majid wasn't close to his gangster brother, that he kept a low profile and he was devoted to his wife and children. Such a good man, that's all I know, he's a beautiful family man. I don't believe it, I can't believe it. We were together yesterday having a barbecue. But his family name, Hamzi, is one well known to police. Older brother convicted murderer Bassam Hamzi founded the deadly Brothers for Life gang. Aunt Maha Hamzi was wounded when her home was shot up in March 2013. Cousin Mahmoud Hamzi was killed in October of that year, a case of mistaken identity. The actual target, a different cousin, Mohammed Hamzi, is now behind bars for manslaughter. And another Hamzi family home was targeted just two nights ago. Police are now bracing themselves, wondering whether this will spark another ugly gang war. Police are always uh, worried in, in circumstances like this, um, when we have a public shooting, uh, that there could be uh, repercussions. And let's go to Ashley Hanson now. Ash, are police any closer to finding the killers? Not yet, Mark. A crime scene remains in place, stretching around 200 metres, and they still haven't found a weapon. And while Majid Hamzi is known to police, a motive for his execution isn't clear. Detectives are speaking with his friends and family, and it isn't known if they will speak to his notorious gangster brother, Bassam Hamzi, who's serving time in Goulburn Supermax prison, to see if he may know who wanted his brother dead and why. Mark. OK, Ashley Hanson at Condell Park. Thank you. Life is about to change again with more COVID rules being relaxed. Dining out will become easier with the cap on group bookings increased. Weddings are going to get bigger too with 300 guests allowed. The rollback coinciding with a day of zero local cases. It's the early Christmas gift from the state government. Merry Christmas, guys. More people allowed at functions outdoors just as the weather warms up. At least now we can say to families uh, and friends that you will be able to plan for at least 30 people at a Christmas event. That's an increase of 10, but only for outdoors, while hospitality venues can increase to bookings of 30 people indoors, all starting this Friday. This is going to be a game changer. This is a big game changer. Celebrity chef Luke Mangan says not only will institutions like Glass benefit, but restaurants and clubs big and small citywide. Which in turn is going to create more jobs and that's what the government wants. A table of 10 is great, but a table of 30 is even better. The government even encouraging families to scrap Christmas lunch at home and eat out instead. 
The health experts will tell you it's much safer having people in a COVID safe environment with the social distancing than it could be in a confined space within a family home. Weddings will also be allowed to increase to 300 from December 1st. The easing of restrictions made possible, the government says, by the continued low numbers of COVID cases. Just four today and all of those in hotel quarantine. No community transmissions for the first time in almost two weeks. And education authorities are doing all they can to keep it that way, preparing for an HSC exam season like no other. Here at St Catherine's Waverley, setting for the maximum 75 students per room and cleaning between sessions. We're thinking of you tomorrow. Uh, we hope uh, you will do your best. We know you will. A fail mark, though, for Victoria, as more New Zealand visitors transited through Sydney today. Very emotional. <laughs> she was born in May and we haven't met her yet. Premier Dan Andrews was complaining again, despite his own government website saying currently the Victorian borders are open. If you're travelling from New Zealand, then you are able to travel to Victoria. I'm a little confused about uh, what is going on in Victoria at the moment. With Border Force also confirming today, Victorian officials did not object when the plan was revealed last week. Chris Reason, 7 News. Victorians are starting to see some light at the end of a long tunnel with more restrictions easing today. They can travel further from home, play golf and finally hairdressers are buzzing again. But retail and hospitality remain closed. One death and four new COVID cases were recorded today. At worst, if this trend were to continue at a slightly higher level, we'll be opening the place up on the 1st of November. But the Federal Treasurer has accused Mr Andrews of bloody-mindedness, claiming the Victorian Premier is making it up as he goes along. City researchers have developed a saliva test that can detect COVID in just 15 minutes. Scientists from the University of Technology say their swab can pick up the virus earlier and provides a quicker result than current methods. When the patient is still hasn't shown the symptom, but they're already infectious, we can, we can spot them we can detect them. Lab trials are expected to begin before Christmas. Premier Gladys Berejiklian is facing a new parliamentary week, buoyed by public support, but still under intense scrutiny, accused of using weasel words over her relationship with Daryl Maguire. She's now also under pressure to change how the state's corruption body is funded, the very organisation investigating Mr Maguire's shady deals. Unlucky in love, but still showered with affection. We call you our Gladys because you are out. You're the best Premier. Gladys Berejiklian lauded by listeners. Dry your tears, hold your head up high. We're 100% behind you, sweetheart. As she opens up again about her broken heart. If you see me one day, come and give me a hug. The Premier admitting she loved Daryl Maguire, wanted to marry him, but says never considered him her boyfriend. It wasn't anything of, of note. I, I, you know, I certainly hoped it would be. Later, Ms Berejiklian appeared to confirm they were romantically involved after she sacked him in 2018 over a separate corruption inquiry. Obviously, for a long time it was not, but then um, obviously uh, we maintained a close relationship. It shouldn't be about weasel words. There is no grey here. The Premier should have disclosed that relationship. The Home Affairs Department has confirmed it's investigating Mr Maguire's illegal cash for visas scheme. I've not seen the, the specifics, right? Uh, and I, but I've asked for a, a report. The Premier is also facing a new ICAC controversy, this time over funding. Currently, the corruption watchdog has to apply directly to her department for money but it wants all decisions about its budget made independently from the government of the day. The shooters will introduce a bill tomorrow to make that request a reality. The Premier must support this. This is high time now to see this change made. Her position to be determined by a report into the proposal also due tomorrow. I wouldn't say oppose, but I think it would be appropriate for us to consider what the Auditor General says about the matter. Alex Hart, 7 News. A senior federal department official has admitted some bureaucrats tried to cover up the so-called dodgy Western Sydney Airport land deal. Four investigations, including a police probe, are now underway as Labor questions whether criminal behaviour was involved. The airport land valuation that really took off. Somebody worked pretty hard to get it high, didn't they? A $3 million tract of land bought by taxpayers for $30 million from the billionaire Perich family. Bureaucrats today in a tailspin. What it looks like 
His people tried to cover it up when the audit office came asking questions. Senator, I agree with you. Also agreeing senior bureaucrats were misleading and acted unethically. Senator, I don't consider that to be appropriate behaviour. Oh, please. And I'm deeply concerned about that. I actually find it gobsmacking, to be honest. The Perich family's property and dairy empire is a major donor to the Liberal Party. The Western Sydney Airport Corporation, which runs the Badgeries Creek site, says it played no role. The airport itself was not involved in the Leppington Triangle acquisition. Seven News revealed the police are now investigating the sale, which Deputy Prime Minister and Transport Minister Michael McCormack insists will one day prove to be value for money. But it seems he's on his own. Is there anything in the audit office report which supports that proposition? Not that I'm aware of, Senator. Mr McCormack today is suggesting the price will look better over time. Well, it, uh, at least they won't be having to buy it and pay probably considerably more than $30 million for it then in decades' time. But conceding the price today is... Very much over the odds. As Anthony Albanese's childcare message is challenged by a young heckler. From this crisis, from the recovery... Too many Pulling the plug on his news conference. Mark Riley, 7 News. A 46-year-old who sparked a manhunt on the central coast has been arrested following a fatal police shooting. Officers shot dead Joshua Duke at Hamlin Terrace on Thursday after he pointed a shotgun at them. Heavily armed police then spent hours searching bushland for another man. Last night he was arrested at his Springfield home on a number of outstanding warrants. He's been refused bail. An engagement party at Riverston has ended in a wild brawl which left three men, including the groom-to-be, in hospital. Police believe one of the guests may have been armed with a hammer, but it's a slow-going investigation with the victims refusing to talk. A celebration turns to conflict. Daniel Sinerton and Jessica Yardley were hosting their engagement party at their Riverston home late yesterday. But by 8pm, guests were brawling in the backyard. We just heard um, a little bit of yelling and screaming. The groom and two other men suffered head injuries and were taken to hospital. Neighbours saw other guests scatter. He was just in a rush, like he just bolted and yeah, he was just gone. Today, Daniel's parents visited the home looking for answers. Open the f***ing door! Hey. I'm feeling I'm f***ed off. So is the whole family. After the party was broken up, police seized several pieces of evidence, including a hammer. At this stage, detectives are yet to work out what sparked the brawl because the victims are refusing to talk. A bridal brawl that hopefully won't be repeated at the wedding. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. Donald Trump has taken his campaign to church, chasing the evangelical vote in a place not always synonymous with religion, Las Vegas. The president, his press secretary and top advisor, Hope Hicks, all recently infected with COVID, choosing not to wear masks as Team Trump stormed a rally and fundraising blitz. The Lord said to me, I am going to give your president a second win. Searching for salvation in Sin City. President Trump gratefully receiving evangelical backing, giving thanks and cash in his pitch to Christian conservatives. So get out there on November 3rd or sooner and do your thing. But in a sign it's the Trump campaign in need of money, a Californian stopover for a big bucks closed door fundraiser. Donald Trump outspent by his rival two to one in a handful of swing states. Happy milkshake. Joe Biden shaking up his campaign. You got one vanilla, one chocolate. In North Carolina in a bold bid to flip it blue. No red states, no blue states, just the United States. Trump back on stage in Carson City today. Oh, what a crowd. After this chant last night in Michigan drew heat. Lock them all up. Referencing Governor Gretchen Whitmer, the target of a foiled kidnap and kill plot. The president is at it again and inspiring and in incentivizing and um, inciting 
this kind of domestic terrorism. Here in Nevada, they've got a pretty good record of predicting presidents. Over more than a century, the state has voted for the winner in all but two elections. And it could be part of a plan B for Donald Trump. Should he lose one of his big must-win states back east, he'll need Nevada to hang on to the White House. Imploring his own party to unite 15 days out. I love the Republicans, and we have some great but they have to learn to stick together better. You know, we have some stupid people. In Carson City, Nevada, Paul Kadak, 7 News. A man who killed his wife 28 years ago is back behind bars accused of another brutal crime. Maximo Pantoja was supposed to be deported after serving 15 years for murder, but he was allowed to stay in Australia because authorities found the interests of his children outweigh the safety of the community. With his bare hands, Maximo Pantoja murdered his wife in their St Peter's home, then played the victim. I can understand why kill, why kill to my wife. He was also accused of raping another woman. That was 1992. Neighbours today remembered the crimes vividly. Blood was all over the wall, you know. Butchery, butchery, you know. He should have been put in blood for life. Pantosha served 15 years, then won an appeal, saving him from deportation to Peru, keeping him close to his children. The likelihood of recidivism is low, but it cannot be described as far-fetched or fanciful. The protection of the Australian community does not override the other considerations, especially the best interests of the children. Despite that decision by the Appeals Tribunal, Pantoja is back here, back behind bars, arrested over the weekend over allegations of rape, stalk and intimidation and assault. Almost 28 years to the day that he murdered his first wife. Our state parole authority is charged with keeping the community safe and then all their hard work is undone by the stroke of a pen. He'll face court on these new charges tomorrow. Laura Banks, 7 News. New research has revealed shocking inequality in the burden of Sydney's tollways, with families in the southwest and west hit the hardest. Those in Camden, Liverpool and Penrith easily pay twice as much because of where they live. The new North Connects motorway, nearly $8 toll for cars, trucks 24, or a fine if they use Pennant Hills Road, and maybe just days away from opening. Got a couple of pieces of infrastructure I'd like to open this week if, uh, if our friends at Transurban uh, will obviously get their skates on. The latest Sydney tollway to reach into the pockets of drivers. It's ridiculous, we just get ripped off left, right and centre. I hate them, <laughs> but they're a necessary evil. Now new analysis shows how much is spent on Sydney tolls and by whom. Now, tolls have really created a new economic division in Sydney between the people who have to spend a lot to get to work and the people who live closer to where their jobs are. Households in Camden are paying an average $793 a year in tolls. Those in Campbelltown, $503 and Liverpool, $608. Households in the Hills pay $611, Parramatta, $435 and Bankstown, $477. It's really getting to the point for many families where they have to go to work in order to afford to go to work. But those in Karingai pay $371, the Northern Beaches $354 and the Inner West just $362, less than half as much as Camden. The disappointing fact here is that the lowest income suburbs pay the most in tolls. For those that can afford it, the report says there are many households prepared to pay top dollar for the convenience, toll bills of well over $6,000 a year. Drivers paying $26 a week or more in tolls annually can apply for free rego. Chris Ma, 7 News. Time now for a check on our weather. Here's Brownie. Yeah, thanks very much, Fergo. Well, it's been a cool Monday. A few brief showers this morning. Clear conditions right now, as we can see. In fact, uh, the temperature sitting on 18 degrees. Feels like 15. Now, the city's total water supply has dropped 0.2% in the past week. Uh, currently stands at 93.8% capacity. For the state, we can see we've had some scattered showers as contracting to the northern coast today. It's been, a, well, a sunny day for most of the state, especially west of the Great Dividing Range. Maximum temperatures indicate Yes, it's been a cool to mild day overall. But having said that, tomorrow, fine across the uh, city.
Sydney basin for your Tuesday. Yes, it'll be a dry and uh, partly cloudy day, but uh, at the moment, current conditions feels like 14 degrees at Bondi. Penrith, well, it's 19 degrees, and of course, I'll have the detailed local forecast top of the hour, Fergo. See you then, David. Thank you. A fisherman got much more than he bargained for. Next, what a crock, the surprise catch and how it got away. History torched as chaos erupts the moment a church spire went down in flames. Car park collapse, a sinkhole opens up, swallowing vehicles. Later, termites attack, the Sydney suburbs at risk and the simple tricks to stop them. And in sport, an iconic grand final moment that's inspiring Penrith's Fijian wrecking ball. 7 News, brought to you by Industry Super Funds. We're working on something bigger than we've ever done before. It's bigger than this. And this. And even this. We're creating over 200,000 jobs by investing in Australia. That'll help get our super and the economy growing again. And if you're with one of these, you're a big part of it. Help each other! Doing this for my family and to show my kids that it's not just daddy who is tough and strong. This is very real for us. The reason why we can't sleep with our families in our beds nice and warm is because of people that can do this job. I'm doing this for my boys. I'm not just the mum that packs their lunches. Above your head! I'm so much more than that. Who has the strength to go the whole way? SAS Australia starts tonight on 7. I love how matte surfaces in nature hold light. How they diffuse the light. Like Colourbon steel matte. They're strong, enduring, yet subtle in their beauty. Core of my heart, my country, land of the rainbow gold. For flood and fire and famine, she pays us back threefold. Over the thirsty paddocks, watch after many days the filmy veil of greenness that thickens as we gaze. Say aloha summer, aloha style with swim rashies from just $8. That's wow. That's best and less. Oh, should I? With great flavour and 50% less fat, it's easy to say, oh yes. Mm. Go on. Say yes to new Smith's Oven Bait. Watch Sky Racing live, anywhere, now available on Sportsbet. So it's between that one and this one. Make the choice easy. Get a 3.9% comparison rate across the Corolla hatch and sedan range. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Welcome back. A North Queensland fisherman keen to bag a barramundi has caught something with a much bigger bite. Jimmy Falkenberg thought he'd snagged his line, but it ended up being a saltwater crocodile. Ah, uh, that is not a stick. Oh, my God. That's not a stick at all. After a bit of a struggle, Jimmy managed to get the hook out of the croc. An urgent overhaul of the state's youth justice system is underway after recent riots left guards feeling powerless against detainees. This week, corrective officers are being taught how to protect themselves to ensure it doesn't happen again. Move back! Move back! Hold the line! Move. It's the new no-nonsense approach to dealing with troublemakers in the state's six juvenile jails. Move back! Move back! 
after the riots at the Frank Baxter facility on the central coast in July last year, where for 21 hours juveniles kept authorities at bay. No one wants to see young people in detention, but when they are, we need to make sure we work with them and we maintain order. Today we're at Yasma in Haberfield, where staff training is in full swing. Keep your hands where we This group of staff will then go into the field and be able to um, thwart any incident of violence in that centre. If things become more serious than this training scenario, they now have an agreement with Corrective Services to call on their special operations group. So far, the new measures have shown some success. 43% reduction in assaults on staff, assaults on inmates down 31%. Youth justice has already saved around $3 million through reduced workers' compensation, sick leave, overtime and property damage costs. This high-intensity training program giving staff valuable skills. So they feel more confident in their ability to handle situations, both de-escalation and if it comes to the point where they have to use force. Evan Batten, 7 News. Protesters have torched a Catholic church, its burning spire collapsing as crowds watched on. Some on the streets of Santiago could be seen cheering in front of the rubble. It's an escalation of ugly clashes in Chile where demonstrators are facing off with police on the first anniversary of protests over inequality which claimed more than 30 lives. How he dodged injury is astounding. Watch as a car park collapses around this man falling in and leaving him stranded on a stairwell. It happened in Saudi Arabia. Investigators there say three people were rescued. The collapse is under investigation. Cardinal George Pell has conducted his first public mass since returning to Rome. The service marked the 10th anniversary of the canonisation of Mother Mary MacKillop, Australia's first saint. Among the invited guests was Tony Abbott. An iconic Aussie boot company is back under Aussie control. Up next, how Andrew Forrest put his best foot forward to buy RM Williams. A close encounter caught on camera, divers stalked by a great white. Need for Speed, the new deal bringing faster internet to our schools. And rare interview, Chappelle Corby opens up about her mental health and why she's watching the clock. That's next. Your first date. It's something you'll never forget. For dinner then, with me. I've been having dinner my whole life. How hard can I be? Come a little closer, let me get to know you. I think it should be this stressful. I think it's supposed to be fun. Get to know you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, do all your other dates go this well? I can feel the icy winds of the friend zone approaching. Will their first date be their last? Home and Away, tonight at 7. Look fresh and fabulous in cotton texture shirts for just $15. That's wow. That's best and less. Beautiful, aren't they? They migrated to Aldi. They get their fresh stuff from the same place as other supermarkets. Barbados. No, son. Australia. Australia. Aussie fruit, veg and meat at Aldi prices. That's good different. Let's compare health insurance. You might even save some money. OK, I'll do it. Take the <sighs> out of saving. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect. Fresh, natural Simmel. The easy to digest milk. Is that your dog? It's the neighbour's dog. <laughs> Will my insurance cover this? Budget Direct would have provided you with temporary accommodation for up to a year while they repaired it. Budget Direct. Insurance solved. Sun Super is one of Australia's largest and best superannuation funds. Awarded both Super Ratings and Chant West 2020 Super Fund of the Year. Join our 1.4 million members and feel the strength of Sun Super.
let us entertain you with more live sky racing and US sport vision. Anytime, anywhere. Make a date with the edge of your seat this spring. Tab. Long may we play. Get ready to journey beyond. To explore. To taste. To make your escape on the legendary GAN. For more than 90 years, we've been guiding our guests across Australia. And now our passionate team is ready to welcome you back for an unforgettable escape. Embark on unique and immersive experiences, both on and off the train, confident that you're travelling safely. What a way to escape. Welcome back. A legendary bootmaker, R.M. Williams, is back under Australian ownership. Mining magnate Andrew Twiggy Forrest is promising a boost for local manufacturing. But the move could be a loss for Sydney. Returning to its comfort zone, R.M. Williams once again in Australian hands. I'm excited too. Being back in Australian hands is probably the best news you can have these days. So. Employees were told the news this morning at a meeting in the Adelaide workshop. The new owner is mining tycoon Andrew Twiggy Forrest. I'd have to say the family has a big solid lump in its throat about returning R.M. Williams back to Australia. Founded in 1932 by South Australian bushman Reginald Murray Williams, R.M.'s went on to become an Aussie must-have. The trend went global in the 80s. Even former US President Bill Clinton was inaugurated in a pair in 1993. In 2013, the company was sold overseas to Asian company El Catterton, but kept its Australian flair, naming Hugh Jackman as ambassador. I hear you. Don't worry. Loud and clear. Only R.M. Williams. It's believed Twiggy Forest paid $190 million for the company. Its 900 employees have been told there won't be any immediate changes. The new owner pledging manufacturing jobs will stay here in Australia. But in the future, the owners haven't ruled out moving the Sydney headquarters to Adelaide. No decisions at all. I think we want to get to know the company, get to know the people that are there. We can't wait to get to South Australia and visit the factory, get to Sydney and meet the people there. Miley Hogan, 7 News. Two divers have had a very close encounter with a great white. 16-year-old Riley was diving with a friend off Perth when his camera captured this heart-stopping moment. A large shark emerged out of the blue and circled them. It's like it just appeared there out of nowhere. And, you know, first thing, it was such a shock, and, but, you know, the adrenaline was pumping. After trying to hide against the reef, the divers eventually made the nerve-wracking trip safely back to the surface. Public schools are in for a major internet boost thanks to a $300 million investment from the state government. Speeds are set to increase tenfold and some of the most remote students will have broadband access for the very first time. Year 4 wired differently in 2020. Coding, an essential skill. Technology and engineering taught alongside science and maths. We're all being so innovative, you know, through COVID and all our teaching and learning programs. As the curriculum charges ahead, bandwidth in our classrooms can't keep up. But we can reveal all schools are in for an internet overhaul. We'll have the fastest internet of any public education system in the country. The upgrade costing $328 million, a partnership contract secured with Telstra. More than 2,000 public schools set to benefit. It's a big operation. 5,200 kilometres of fibre is being rolled out. One of the largest networks in the world, ensuring even our most remote schools aren't left disconnected. There'll be a tenfold increase in capacity across the network. To some students in regional New South Wales, they've never had access to this sort of speed before. It just opens up so many opportunities for our teachers when it comes to the digital curriculum. All public schools will be on the new super speed connection in the next 18 months, three years ahead of schedule. The learning experiences that they'll now be able to get with things like virtual reality and video conferencing will be amazing. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. Navigating your way around a hospital can be stressful, but even more so for the visually impaired. Now some new technology has been installed to help guide them through. Charlie McConnell's sight started to deteriorate when he was just 18. Since then, getting around, especially indoors, has been a struggle. For quite a while now, we've had uh, various mapping systems for outdoor, 
but as soon as that door opens, and it might be a hospital or anywhere, um, you're finished. Now St Vincent's Hospital has installed new technology to help people like Charlie find their way more easily. Smartphone app Bindi Maps uses Bluetooth and navigational beacons to guide a path through complicated indoor spaces. Home centre waiting area is four metres to your right. Very, very impressed. Very impressed. Um, it, it, it gets you within arm's length of where you want to be. We think that hospitals are very busy, complicated spaces for anyone to navigate. Dr Anna Wright founded the app after being diagnosed with a rare retinal disease when she was 27. It was developed with the help of Guide Dogs New South Wales and has also been installed in shopping centres and the National Library. So to be able to provide indoor navigation for anyone, but especially the visually impaired, it really aligns with like the missions and values of St Vincent's. St Vincent's is the first hospital in the world to install this new technology. Now it's hoped that it will be rolled out in hospitals right around the country. Samantha Brett, 7 News. Chappelle Corby will make her reality TV debut tonight as a contestant on SAS Australia. The convicted drug smuggler says the experience was gruelling, but something she felt she had to do for herself. A heart-stopping moment on a show where no slack is given. I don't give a f you've been to prison. Chappelle Corby comes out fighting aware mud always sticks. Why are you crying? Simple question. And why did she ever agree to any of it? After what you've been through in your life, why the hell did you want to take part in SAS Australia? Good morning, Kochi. This is the ultimate way to test that I'm in control of my mind. Chappelle served nine years in a Bali prison and still suffers from it. I have had problems with mental illness in the past, severe mental illness. She has a new business, making and selling clocks. I make each clock with 100% of my love. Finally free after so long in a cell, Chappelle began to withdraw from society. I feel my most comfortable in a little small enclosed room but I really need to get out and live my life. The TV role giving her the confidence to step outside her Gold Coast home. I feel like I can breathe easily. SAS Australia premieres tonight on Channel 7 at 7.30. The most gruelling endurance I've ever put myself through. Amanda Abate, 7 News. Kmart and the Salvation Army launched their Wishing Tree appeal today earlier than previous years with fears more people will need help this Christmas due to the pandemic. And this time they're encouraging people to give more practical gifts. Without the support of each Kmart customer giving a gift to the Wishing Tree appeal, we wouldn't be able to provide the support that we do each year. As well as leaving a gift under the tree in store, those feeling generous can donate at the checkout or online by scanning a QR code. When the pandemic hit, many dipped into their super to pay the bills. Next, nest egg warning how much you should be saving to be set for life after work. Money laundering claims the casino giant facing a major investigation. Soon, Sydney's termite plague, homes destroyed, how you can ward them off before they strike. Soon in sport, we are live from Penrith as excitement builds on what shapes as a huge night for the Clearies at the Dally X. A clearing shower and cool today. Whisker warmer tomorrow. See you soon. It's got action. It's got drama. Don't worry. Here we go. He's got this. Nathan Fillion. You okay? Yeah, I probably should have stretched before that. Is the rookie. New season tonight on 7. just have to say no. So when you say yes, it means a lot. Kinder Chocolate comes in little bars with lots of taste. So it's perfect for saying yes to at trick time. Kinder Chocolate, a little means a lot. They're on their way, are you making a pizza? No, I make the love. What? <laughs> It's tough out there, Australia. Every cent counts. Make sure your insurance is about where you're at right now. You could save lots. Yui.
You insured. It's car and home insurance for individuals like you. Discover new homewares made for summer by updating your bedroom with 30% off selected quilt covers. Plus save 45 to 50% off selected mattresses by Sealy and Sleepmaker. Offers end Sunday, November 8. Exclusions and conditions apply. My, my store. New Rainbow Bursties make Hungry Jack's frozen drinks more fun with bursting bubbles of triple bursty flavour sensation. Or add Rainbow Bursties to new bubblegum frozens. Get more flavour and fun with Rainbow Bursties. Only at Hungry Jack's. Tuesday night, taco preparations begin. A dominant female wrestles with a guacamole, whilst her counterpart has found an alternative to beef mince. With grace, they settle into their nest for the evening. You're a tough guy, like you're really a rough guy Just can't get enough guy, just always so puff guy I'm that bad type, make your mama sad type I'm the bad guy Zeltos. Duh If you're serious about buying a property And not just tapping on walls The first place you should start is ANZ Buy Ready You'll know how much a property could sell for and you can start your home loan pre-approval application in just five minutes. So you're ready to make your move. Get on top of property buying with ANZ Buy Ready. The share market notched up a seven-month high today, partly on the back of a slight easing of restrictions in Victoria. Plenty of green on the board. Biotech leader CSL shot up following suggestions the Oxford COVID vaccine could be ready for rollout as early as December. And one Aussie dollar is buying just under 71 US cents. Fuel prices have fallen slightly to start the working week. Today's average was $1.23.8 a litre, but there's regular unleaded for just over a dollar at Villawood. Australia's financial crimes watchdog has launched an investigation into Crown's Melbourne casino operations. Austrac has told the gaming giant it's identified potential breaches of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing laws. Crown's Sydney casino is due to open in December before an inquiry into its suitability delivers its findings. Fears Australians are crippling their retirement income by dipping into super early during the pandemic appear to be easing. Although more than 4 million payouts have been made, the number of applications is now levelling off. The superannuation early release scheme started in April as COVID layoffs slashed family incomes. Members could apply for up to $10,000 twice, stoking fears some were risking their retirements. But the latest figures show that while there have been 4.6 million payouts totaling $34 billion, the average payment is $7,600, well under $10,000, and applications are levelling out. Experts say super makes sense. It really isn't affluent, it is about dignity. For a comfortable retirement, a 30-year-old should have around $61,000 by now, $154,000 for a 40-year-old, $271,000 at 50, $430,000 at 60, and $523,000 at 65. This is about $62,000 a year for a couple in today's money. Enough to cover a reasonable car, eat out, dress well and take the odd overseas holiday. We want to get 50% of Australians there by 2050. At the moment, 25% get there. But this year, the median balance super fund is down 3%. I think we're all a bit shocked at how quickly markets fell and just as shocked at how quickly they've come back. Experts say there could be more bumps ahead but to think long term. I think most people are going to start seeing those uh, falls in their super balances fading away and probably getting back to uh, a more normal programming. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Pest experts say termites are now worse than ever and they are everywhere. But there are some simple steps to keep them away. We'll tell you soon on 7 News. But now Mel has sport from deep in the heart of Panthers territory. Hi there, Mel. It's a big night for the Clearies. Oh, you're right there. Hello to you, Fergo. Nathan is the hot favourite to win the Dally M and Ivan is up for Coach of the Year. We'll chat to him next. Plus, the Blues and their faithful companion head into Origin Camp, but a key player is missing. And the AFL star who had to present himself with the game's highest individual honour. You do something like radio for 20 years, then all of a sudden you're out of work. I lost my self-confidence and then this came along. 
Absolutely shredded my nuts. Do you think this is a joke? It's more to me than just silly, funny comedian. Are you OK? Yes, stop! I would never, ever have put you as a comedian. That doesn't say a lot about my comedy, then, does it? SAS Australia starts tonight, 7.30 on 7. Fun app or Winks? Might and Power or Kingston Town? Who will you be backing in the Labroke's greatest ever cops play? Watch the running of the race this Friday night at 8.30 on 7.2. Ladbrokes, back yourself. This year, thousands of Aussies have jumped on board Light and Easy's Jumpstart program to help fast track their weight loss success and improve their health. The first two weeks on Jumpstart were amazing. Jumpstart did jumpstart things for me. The more you see the results, the more you want to do it. That's what pushed me to keep going because it was working. All up, I've lost 25 kilos. It was something that was actually working for me and it wasn't just another fad diet. Isn't it time you jumped on board the weight loss program everyone's talking about? Visit lightandeasy.com.au today. At Care Super, we understand it takes hard work to outperform. For us, it's about adapting to deliver superior performance. That's how we've consistently outperformed other super funds over the long term. Put yourself in a place where everything is possible. The BMW X3 S Drive 20i. From 69900, drive away. Inspiration captured. Search BMW X3. Show me the one whose safety deemed such destruction. You must reunite it with its own kind. The Mandalorian. New season streaming October 30 on Disney+. Plus. As part of BHP's training and local business support program, we are pleased to announce the BHP Apprenticeship Pledge to create 3,500 new apprenticeships and training positions across Australia over the next five years. I feel like going back home. Yeah, this is how I would do it. Right now, while I'm going to go. I got you. Japan is starting to bloom. This year, we are valuing the little things more than ever because they may well turn out to have been the big things all along. Coles, value the Australian way. Farlab or Winx? Might and Power or Kingston Town? Who will you be backing in the Labroke's greatest ever cops play? Watch the running of the race this Friday night at 8.30 on 7.2. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Welcome back to Panthers in Penrith, where the faithful are gathering to watch tonight's Dallium medal count. Nathan Cleary is a hot favourite to become the youngest winner of the award since Jared Hayne back in 2009. Michelle Bishop caught up with Ivan Cleary a short time ago. Mel, no red carpet and no fancy dinners, but who needs glitz and glamour when you're with the coach of the Penrith Panthers? Ivan Cleary, thank you for joining me. Tonight's a really special night for your family, all about Nathan, really. He's had a super year. How is he heading into the grand final? Yeah, we're just uh, get, still getting over uh, the weekend. Um, it's taking it pretty slow at the moment. It's obviously a long week. There's lots happening. Uh, but yeah, everyone pulled up pretty well, and, and that certainly did as well. Um, 17 straight. We're hoping for 18. Not well, runs on the board for the coach of the year. How are you? Oh, I feel really good. Yeah, very grateful to, to be in this position. Uh, be back in the grand final. So um, yeah, just I guess lapping it up. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. So just really. Uh, Honoured and proud to be part of our group. Well, thank you for joining me. Mel, uh, tonight certainly has a clearly feeling about it. Um, I'm sure they'll be early to bed tonight and straight back into it tomorrow. Thank you, Shell. Have a great night. Looking great as usual. One of the great grand final moments in Penrith's proud history had a profound impact on one of their current stars. Viliame Kikau says Scott Sattler's iconic tackle back in 2003 inspired him to work harder and make the most of his league career. There's a buzz at the foot of the mountains. We haven't seen scenes like this in Penrith since 2003 when Scott Sattler helped clinch a famous underdog triumph. What a by Scott Sattler. Sattler sees the parallels with the current Panthers who head into the decider against Melbourne as underdogs despite 17 straight wins. We're coming up against this star-studded rooster side 
Um, everyone expected us to fall over also on the, on the big occasion. Sattler's iconic moment inspired Panthers cult figure with the peroxide blonde locks, Viliami Kikau. That's what every player dreams about and um, I didn't even know like sort of rugby league before I moved to Australia and one of the things that stood out for me when um, that chased down uh, the Sattler, I think, that's one of the things that I've dreamed of. Oh, that's... Uh... It's nice to know. I've got no doubt Villy Army, if he, if he plays his role this week, he'll, he'll get to feel the same excitement. After missing the preliminary final through suspension, Kikau has a debt to repay. They say they'll do the job for me. Um, they'll bring it home and uh, just for me to be, uh, be ready for that um, GF. Big Kicks is more than ready and has promised not to have a single hair out of place. Are you going to peroxide it again for the grand final? Uh, definitely putting a little bit of blonde, I think, tomorrow, Tuesday. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. Cameron Smith still insists he hasn't made a decision on retirement. The legendary storm skipper remains coy over the big question dominating grand final week. Smith says he doesn't fear retirement, but also says he could play again next year. Don't know. Don't know. I haven't really thought about it too much. My... I've, I've put all of my energy and my thoughts towards um, you know, my football this year. The Blues went into camp with their new mascot named Bruce, but last year's series winning hero James Tedesco will miss the start of training to nurse a knee injury. Star Giants forward Jeremy Cameron has told the club he wants to leave during the trade period. In Brisbane last night, Lions star Lockie Neal won the Brownlow medal for the competition's best and fairest player, polling 10 more votes than his nearest rival. COVID rules meant Neal had to present the medal to himself. The AFL grand final between Richmond and Geelong at the Gabba on Saturday is live right here, of course, on 7. Supercars champion Scott McLaughlin has won his third Barry Sheen medal for the best and fairest driver. Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander say the unique challenges of the season during the pandemic made their Bathurst victory even sweeter. The pair's near flawless display provided a fitting farewell for Holden in the manufacturer's last race at Mount Panorama. And what about this for a comeback in the Premier League? West Ham trailed Tottenham 3-0 for the best part of 82 minutes before a monumental fight back. The Hammers banged in three quick goals to salvage an unlikely draw. The equaliser came in stoppage time in the form of an absolute thunderbolt from Argentine Manuel Lanzini. Fergo, so much sport as we keep talking about, but it's awards season, of course, the NRL grand final. I mean, Panthers heartland here in Penrith, and they say don't work with animals, but Penny and Scratch, they've been pretty good to work with so far, but the fans here, they're getting really excited for a massive week. Nice to have some professional partners behind you for a change, Mel. Very well done. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. A family's been hit by an insect army, leaving them with a quarter of a million dollar bill. Pest controllers say termites are now worse than ever, and it doesn't really matter which Sydney suburb you live in, because they're everywhere. They work non-stop day and night through our suburbs, wrecking family homes. From this to this. Completely ruined, yeah. It's just like mud leaves there. Termites cause more property damage than floods, fires and storms combined. Pest controllers like Paul Comerford declare they're now getting worse every year. In my last five years, it's really ramped up. At this home, they've done a quarter of a million dollars worth of damage, starting under the bathroom. The termites love moisture. Most rooms have been attacked, um, especially here. This corner stud here is just completely, completely ruined. The main nest can be in a backyard tree, but termites can make sub-nests in the underfloor space below the concrete slab, in the roof or walls. In the summertime when it's hot, um, damage like this could take a couple of months. Pest experts say the top five termite hotspots in Sydney? Seaforth, Taramurra, Castle Hill, Campbelltown and Gymea Bay. But they're in every suburb, wherever there's wood, dampness and dark areas to forage. Your home building insurance won't cover you for termite damage. So the best protection is have an annual inspection, but make sure it's conducted by a technician correctly certified specifically in termite management. Helen Wellings, 7 News. The sound of baby ducks in distress has led to a special rescue in Melbourne. The SES found seven ducklings stuck in a drain near a golf club. Rescuers removed the bars, then made a ramp for the youngsters to escape. They happily waddled out and were reunited with mum and dad. Now here's a quick look at what's on sunrise tomorrow.
Thanks, Fergo. When you wake up, the right royal rift behind the scenes of William and Harry's bitter dispute. All the secrets from the royal insider and why it started long before Meghan. That's tomorrow on Sunrise. See you in the morning, Sydney. David is back now. Brownie, cool today as forecast. Yeah, and the odd shower as well, Fergo. Fine tomorrow, but the rains are coming. I'll see you after the break. Tonight on the latest travel ban debate, can the government really stop residents leaving the country? A constitutional lawyer weighs in. Has the bank of mum and dad run out COVID's impact on millennial finances? And the terrifying encounter with a great white shark caught on camera? That's tonight on the latest. Your first date. It's something you'll never forget. A dinner then with me. I've been having dinner my whole life. How hard can I be? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So, do all your other dates go this well? Will their first date be their last? Home and Away, next up on 7. Tonight? I'll be eating a veggie cheeseburger on ciabatta. No tomatoes. Tonight, I'll be eating four cheese tortellini with extra tomatoes. So it's come to this. Thank you. Bravo. Careful, Hamel. Daddy's not here to save you. Oh, I am my daddy. Wait, what? What are you talking about? It's time to reboot 2020. <laughs> to hit the road. Swap your indoors for the great outdoors. Love caravan and camping. Love New South Wales. As part of BHP's new training and local business support program, BHP has announced a $780 million investment to support new apprenticeships, training and business opportunities across Australia over the next five years. Right now, Ford is delivering even more for business with a $1,000 deposit contribution when you take My Ford Finance, reducing your loan by a thousand bucks right at the get go. So get to your Ford dealer now. We'll keep you moving. Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. And Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. That and that. Mm, not so good for that. But for a delicious meal every time, Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. Get $4,000 to spend on that special thing for the house. Refinance your home loan with St George and get $4,000 cash back to spend on whatever you like. Search St George Home Loans or ask your broker today. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of barbecue faves. Mix and save two selected items for $12. Like Coles Tasty Beef and Time Burgers and Coles No Added Hormone Beef Quick Cook Porterhouse Steaks. Coles, value the Australian way. Using mobile data and internet reduces Australia's carbon footprint by reducing travel and making business more efficient. But their use also creates CO2 and your carbon thumbprint may be something you have never even considered. Well, there is a solution. Belong. Carbon neutral mobile and internet. This weather report is brought to you by Belong. Carbon neutral mobile and internet. Sydney street gangs, preying on commuters, no one off limits, even the disabled. The plan to stop them, 7 News at 6. Tonight, 7 News headlines, police are hunting two killers after a notorious gangster's brother was gunned down near Bankstown. Further COVID restrictions are being rolled back for venues, weddings and Christmas parties. And iconic Aussie bootmaker RM Williams is back under Aussie ownership. Now the latest on our weather, here's David. Thanks very much, Virgo. Well, it's fine and cool across our uh, city this evening. Partly cloudy conditions, and I must say it is looking good tomorrow. Now, the mercury tapped out on the cool side of normal. 
21.3 degrees, just a few minutes after 3 o'clock this afternoon. By the way, that's about uh, 1 degree below the long-term average. Cloud lingered in the outer west until around about uh, mid-afternoon. Following those early morning showers, we had mainly over our coastal areas. In fact, uh, you'll notice Penrith cracked 24 degrees. Not so cloudy right along the coast during lunchtime. In fact, uh, check out Manly. Yes, mostly sunny, but it was rather chilly in the wind. In fact, it felt like 15 degrees in the shade. Now, the un unstable onshore airstream continues to drive some scattered showers, mainly along the north coast at the moment. Of course, we've got this cool southerly that continues to run up the coast. But tomorrow, as this high slips into the Tasman Sea, the airstream will start to tend southeasterly, so the wind won't have as much chill. Uh, we're expecting isolated showers, mainly about the uh, north coast, but not a lot of rainfall, and uh, remaining fine across the interior. But of course, but spring being spring, there's always a change in the wind somewhere. Have a look at this. Most of this rain falls across, well, from Friday throughout the uh, weekend. The dark green indicates 50. 25 to 50 millimetres. Of course, that's more good news for our farmers. Nationwide tomorrow, Brisbane, warm, generally sunny conditions around 27 degrees. For Melbourne, it should be fine and 18 degrees. For our state, fine and mostly sunny, apart from those isolated showers that's clearing parts of the uh, north coast maybe a degree or two warmer than today but not so for the metro area in fact uh, we're expecting maxima very similar to today the only difference though it should be dry and we'll see lengthy sunny breaks especially during the afternoon for our coastal waters winds out of the southeast tending a little more easily during the afternoon running at a, a similar sort of speed around 10 to 15 knots for the city our forecast high is 22 degrees so morning cloud clearing to a mostly sunny afternoon let's move on to that seven day outlook fine and generally sunny conditions on wednesday as well Maybe a whisker warmer. On Thursday, things start to change in our west, becoming unsettled. Might see some afternoon showers in the odd storm. As for the weekend, rain at times and some local storms. So the turbulent mix continues as we head towards the weekend, Fergus. Right, over, Annie. Thanking you. That is 7 News for this Monday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a great night.